This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. It's been one year since the Kargil War occurred and the Indian Armed Forces are holding celebrations across the country. Well, to give us more about the reality of security in the post-Kargil phase, we are now joined by the Union Defence Minister, Mr. George Fernandez. Mr. Fernandez, thank you very much for speaking to us. Is this really a time for celebration or perhaps for introspection? Well, introspection is always an ongoing process. You should never ever stop introspecting. The point is that introspection is on and will always be on. But celebration of uh, 26th, it's a, it's a victory day celebration. Mm -hmm. We had a victory on the 26th of July last year, so this is the anniversary of that. Okay. And uh, it's not just celebration in terms of uh, you know, rejoicing or anything like that, because we'll be thinking of those 500-odd uh, uh, officers and men, the finest of our, uh, of our fighting forces, mm -hmm. who laid down their lives. We'll be thinking of those who have been wounded, many of them to a point where they'll never ever been uh, able to walk again mm -hmm. or do any work again. Mm -hmm. We'll be thinking of them. Okay. And that's where we are ca lighting that candle that night and we're asking the whole country to light, each one to light a candle. Because this has to do with uh, remembering what uh, our men did to achieve that victory. But there is another purpose and that is, you know, we are a wholly security-wise, couldn't care less kind of people. The media took the Kargil war into everybody's bedrooms and mm -hmm. drawing rooms. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there was that patriotic fervor. Mm -hmm. Many people responded in various different ways. Mm -hmm. But we are, every day we face these situations in Jammu and Kashmir, and we face these situations in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anybody thinks of the men who are there, who lay down their lives uh, every second day or third day. Mm. So we would, I would like to use this opportunity to also make people aware that, listen, we have uh, sensitive borders. Our men are there. Each day they are on 24-hour on uh, watch there. And uh, often they uh, lay down their life there. Mm -hmm. It is widely believed that intelligence failures had resulted in Kargil occurring in the first place. Has there been any firm attempt by the government to reevaluate, reassess, and rework the intelligence set up in this country? Well, as I said, uh, there is a special committee that is looking into the intelligence aspect. What kind of uh, uh, weaknesses there are, and how do we overcome those weaknesses, and so on. But uh, from day one, uh, post uh, Kargil, uh, we have taken measures to see that uh, situations like this do not uh, recur. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget that Kargil happened not because of intelligence failure, but for the simple reason that there was a certain trust, expressed or unexpressed, mm -hmm. a certain understanding, expressed or unexpressed, between India and Pakistan. Who arrived at it and why it was arrived at is something about which uh, someone will have to make research. Mm -hmm. But in 1972, you decided that you will not have your petrols all over this 150 mm -hmm. A kilometer long border mm. uh, on on the Kargil sector. Mm. You decided that you will have a few posts in, uh, in scattered in some places, mm. and those also we will withdraw when our we will withdraw mm. our men when it is winter. Mm. Now, this this uh, went on for uh, 27 long mm. years. Mm. So, therefore, to call that as an intelligence failure mm. is uh, begging the question, in my view. But was there an intelligence failure? Was I personally there... have believed that there was no intelligence failure. Hmm. When the men, when the Pakistanis were cited, human intelligence immediately hmm. reported to the army unit, nearby army unit. Army but they started. reported several weeks later. No. There was not. a suspicion that the Pakistanis had occupied those heights much earlier no, no, than there when was they no were suspicion. first detected by the Indian Army or human. But who suspected and who told whom? If there mm -hmm. was a suspicion, then it must have come in the, in the mind of some person. What about the bases which were built over there? The Manthod Halo base, for example. It must have taken the Pakistanis extensive preparation to make a base camp as large as that. No, listen, if there have been, if people have come, there is no doubt about that. Right. People did ingress, there is no doubt about mm -hmm. that. They didn't, uh, uh, they were not identified the day they walked in. Right. They were identified at some point. But and much that, later on, was that too late? 
Well, I won't say it was too late. For the simple reason, I don't think anyone has uh, the exact date of uh, the first ingression. Mm -hmm. But we have uh, documents in opposition. Mm -hmm. The diaries written by the officers, the diaries mm -hmm. written by men, mm -hmm. which, have been, uh, which have been made mm -hmm. uh, available whenever anybody discussed it. Mm -hmm. And those diaries to show that they came there towards mm -hmm. the end of April. Mm -hmm. They were identified there on the, in the first week of May. Mm -hmm. And the day the man who was uh, there discovered this, it was reported. What about wide area surveillance operations by the Indian Army or Air Force helicopters? There's very little of this which was, which was done at all in these areas. No, obviously in, the, in, the, in, that, in those, 22 year, in, in those mm -hmm. 27 years, mm -hmm. there was precious little that was done for the simple reason that nobody ever perhaps thought that this mm -hmm. is a place where anybody is going to attack you. But now that we have learned this lesson, that, for, I mean, irrespective of whether there is a, a written trust or a spoken trust between India and Pakistan, after the lesson of Kargil, has there been a change in the intelligence setup? Yeah, that's the point I was making. That, uh, that uh, from day one, mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. fighting got over, mm -hmm. we have taken adequate precautions to see that nothing is ever going to happen again of but the what, kind that we went through. what sort of precautions? Greater coordination? The precautions are that A, we are manning the posts now. Okay. At heights of uh, 17,000 and 18,000 feet. Mm -hmm. We are manning those posts. Our mm -hmm. men are there. They mm -hmm. are there in, in conditions which uh, are inhuman, but mm -hmm. nevertheless, they are there. Mm -hmm. Whatever they need, whatever is needed to make them uh, as comfortable as possible in the circumstances mm -hmm. has been made available. Mm -hmm. We have uh, equipped uh, our men there with the kind of weapons that they need in those heights. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, we have uh, aerial surveillance that mm -hmm. is now taking place on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have human intelligence down the line. Mm -hmm. And we also are going for other high-tech gadgetry, mm -hmm. which will take care of, if, uh, of any kind of uh, uh, likely uh, uh, situation that we may have to face. Right. What about the new core which has been formed? How significant is that, the 14 core, in all of what you're mentioning? Well, the fact that we, had, we now have another core there means that we now have a dedicated uh, mm. uh, core which is looking into matters mm. which earlier were being looked after by one core. Mm. 